everybody. Welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ show. I am so excited today. I'm talking to Hillary Barrett about her book, I Ching, Walking, Walking Your, Walking Your Path, Creating Your Future. So welcome, Hillary. Hi. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so I, um, my, um, teacher I said I just want like there's so many different I have probably now three different I Ching books um, available and I said at the time I said I just want something like simple and clean you know like something that is light um, <laughs> and that I can read that's simple and clean mm -hmm. and so he had recommended your book so um, I How wanted to yeah. So I wanted to start off with a little bit about talking about your experience with the I Ching, how you got started, um, a little bit about your experience. Mm -hmm. um, how I got started? Um, well, it was it was kind of by accident, um, really. Um, I read about um, a, this book that um, the author said would help you with them. Um, um, oh, with with becoming more creative or more in touch with yourself or something as as a kind of random stimulus. Mm -hmm. And I thought that sounded interesting. And I found a book in a secondhand bookshop and I borrowed one from the library and I tried for this random stimulus. And then at some point I found that it was actually talking to me. Wow. Uh, which, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it, it should be wow. I think there should be this uh, there should always be this moment of wait this is not just me and a book. This is a conversation. I'm being spoken to. There's a living connection going on here. Mm. Um, um, and it should, you know, I think it should keep surprising you. Mm. Um, I love the idea of the book talking to you, mm. having a, a live conversation, a living conversation with a book. So that's, <laughs> that's your, what it does. And that was your start of the I Ching and um, you started off looking at creativity and, and, and so now what is, what is the I Ching for people who are unfamiliar with the book, what it's all about? It's a very old oracle. Um, it's about 3000 years old. Um, and yeah, it is, as you already said, it's a book. Um, it's a very small one, actually. Um, if you look at the, at the earliest form of it and, and take out all the commentary and stuff we write about it. Um, it just consists of um, 64 hexagrams, diagrams, which are stacks of six lines. And you can show us some later and that will make it plainer what they are. And there, there's text, little bits of text associated with each arrangement of lines and each individual line. Um, and... So when you consult it, it takes you to one of these diagrams and you read the associated text. Um, right, so there, there are eight elements, as I understand it. Would you call them elements or trigrams? That are tri part tri trigrams, yeah. Okay, and so they represent everything from earth, uh, lake, you know, things like earth, fire, um, to things like lake, like things that are kind of comprised of, of different, um, um, things like lake thunder. Um, so these these trigrams then get stacked upon each other. There is like a lower trigram and then an upper trigram of which then create a hexagram just so we actually mm -hmm. get terminology correct. Yeah. So um, this is an example from your book of the various trigrams and hexagrams. Um, and so this is, this is an oracle. So is it meant for, it's, so it's meant for divination. So getting a sense of predicting the future or how, how does one, how have you used this book? You originally looked at it for creativity. How, now that you've um, been talking to your friend for a long time, <laughs> Having a yes. conversation Be, and been being talked to by it, yes, yes. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. How 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 do you how have you how have you consulted with this friend of yours? Um, um, I, it is possible to ask about the future, but it's generally a lot more helpful to ask about the present moment. Mm -hmm. Um, what uh, what's happening? How how can I best go about this? How should I approach this? 
or you know I'm just going to go into this conversation what should I bear in mind mm -hmm. what would be a good guiding principle for me to take with me mm -hmm. and, and so it helps with decisions as well um you know should I do you're wondering should I do this or, or do that and you can go to the oracle and ask okay what if I took that road mm. what would I see down there and then it helps you to imagine uh, to see and to imagine what it would be like to do this and you look at the picture and it, pa it paints and you say, oh, yeah, yeah, it would be like that, wouldn't it? Um, and then you see whether you like that, um, whether that actually is something you want. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, um, uh, there's so many div divination tools. You know, there's <laughs> oh, yes. cards of all sort now, like angel cards, animal cards, you know, tarot. Um, um, there's now, even with within the I Ching, there's all the different types of ways you can actually throw mm -hmm. coins. You can actually, I actually have um, um, a set of Yoro sticks, which really Lovely. are, mm. they're not, they're basically bamboo sticks that are used to skewer. <laughs> yes. So long as there are 50 of them. Nothing is fucking, nothing's going to be fussy. Yes, yes. and ni and nice, what's nice is you can go to Amazon and they're 25 per package, which is just shocking to me. So either right. everyone's using Two. these as Euro sticks. <laughs> <laughs> and then I have, of course, my, you know, three handy American quarters. You can use, you know, any mm. kinds of coins yeah. that you want. And then there's, I don't even know how many different online apps now that are out there. Mm. So um, did you use any divinator, you know, divination tools aside from the I Ching? How would you describe the difference between the I Ching and other divination tools? Um, I've, I've tried tarot and runes a couple of times, but I don't really know anything about them. Um, and the difference is that the I Ching is 3000 years old and it's been in continuous use all that time there hasn't been a day when someone or a few thousand people nowadays haven't been talking with it and it hasn't been answering and helping mm. um, and so there is this enormous tradition um partly of what people felt that kind of felt it ought to be saying um mm. <laughs> in accordance with what they thought was a good thing for an oracle to say and partly also just from people's experience mm -hmm. and that of course is continues to build up all the time and my website has a community of people who do readings and share their readings with each other and share ideas and they are building up their own reservoir of experience within that community mm. um, you know, oh yes we had this hexagram you know when I had that one it meant it meant this yeah I found when I get it it means this and Mm. So, but that process of, um, you know, of building up the language and the, the relationship between the oracle and the people who talk to it mm. has been going on nonstop around the world for three millennia. Mm. Well, it reminds me, um, I talked a, a long time ago to a dream expert and he said, yes, you can actually read, you know, you have a dream about flying. Um, so you want, you can actually go online and find several different interpretations of what it means to fly. But then there is actually a specific interpretation for you and what it means to fly. And so it's almost understanding the lexicon of how to interpret certain types of dreams for you and what it means. Mm -hmm. And so there's this kind of general knowledge that you're gaining from the internet of all these different types of experiences. And yet there's also like something almost like a lexicon of what that hexagram or dream means to you. As yeah, that's, that's it. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point that um, your reading is not just the average of everybody else's because it, it's speaking to you personally and what you hear and how you respond and what resonates with you. That's that's the answer. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, at the same time, of course, that, you know, this is a book and there isn't a uh, there isn't a book of of dream. In, well, uh, of course, there are millions of books of dream symbols, but none of them is 
your book of your dream symbols that would right. be your that would be your dream journal yeah your own yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. your own your yeah. own I Ching you know but in some so, ways so yes, we the, have the, our own the, so yes the, the year itself has a bit more existence outside um, yes than dreams is what I was getting at yeah so then there's so many different ways you know there's the euro six euro six the coins online apps I mean have you mm-hmm. used all any and if so for yourself and your community what's the general consensus on what to use when um, and the accuracy of any of these? Right. Well, you can use pretty much anything that will give you a reading with roughly the right odds of lines being changing or not changing. And we'll get, we'll, I'm sure we'll get to that. Right. Um, uh, the universe is not fussy about what you use. It will work, whatever it is. If it's an online app, you know, I'm, you might think, you know, this is a computer, so it it can't be a way of talking to the cosmos, but it absolutely can. Um, you know, if you're if you're really asking and listening and paying attention, um, I think the universe kind of opens up and rejoices and says, "Hooray, someone is listening and speaks." Um, you know, it it. <laughs> I think it takes it takes a human being to say, oh, no, no, they, you know, that was the wrong kind of coin and they haven't passed through the incense enough. So we're not so that's not going to work. Um, I don't believe the cosmos works like that. Um, <laughs> so in practice, what works is whatever makes it possible for you to ask your question and listen and be, be aware of what you're doing and present to what you're doing. You know, it's funny. I actually, so I have, there are two different Yarrow stick versions that I had. I had, mm-hmm. I had a, a, an I Ching class that I took and the person who wrote the I Ching class is dyslexic. So she wrote the wrong um, thing on the, <laughs> on the chart. And I thought, well, does it really matter? You know, if, 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 if I, if it says two heads and a tail equal this number and she wrote it was a different number, does it really matter if in fact, when I was intentionally following a process, regardless of the process, and when I got the responses, they all made sense to me. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess it's, it's more credence to what you're saying. If you're completely consulting with the true intention of understanding in some ways, it doesn't matter at mm-hmm. least that's what I'm hoping for all those readings I do <laughs> yes you you and a whole and a whole lot of other people who have um, realized they got their coins wrong after after a few weeks or a few months or a few decades or whatever um, yeah yes yeah all yeah. right I, I yeah I for some people what it takes to be able to sort of concentrate and really know that they're going to pay attention to this reading is to sit down for 20 minutes and sort yarrow stalks but for some people, sitting down and sorting yarrow stalks um, is an almighty stressor and a distraction, and they get so caught up in that they completely forget about what they were asking. Mm. In which case, they do better with coins or beads. Mm. Um, beads, interesting. Beads, yes. Um, that's uh, never far away. That's that's what I use. Um, oh, uh, mm. interesting. Um, okay. This was a, a a gift from a friend, and there are four four kinds of bead and each one represents a kind of line um yang or yin and changing or not changing oh Um, interesting and yeah i sit and you know pass them through my fingers without looking at them and then you know let my fingers come to rest on a bead and see what line that is oh beautiful Um, yes yes I, i like that because it can take as long or as short a time as i like i'm if I'm in a hurry, if I'm in a hurry, it's actually quicker than running around and trying to open an app and click a button. Right. Um, and if I'm not in a hurry, which I'd rather not be, but you know, life sometimes happens. Yeah. Then um, I can, you know, passing beads through your fingers and thinking about the question. You know, you can go around and do that as long as you like. Um, okay. Lovely. Nat- right. Naturally meditative kind of flow. Right. So as long as you're. And you have an intention of focus and a sincere desire to have a conversation, even if it's a quick text-like conversation on your computer. Yes, absolutely. What should I do now? Okay, Help. click, click, click. Yes. Exactly, mm-hmm. you have something. All right, lovely. We've been talking to Hillary Barrett and we've been talking about her book, I Ching, 
walking your path, creating your future. And in the next segment, we're going to actually demonstrate, um, talk a little bit, uh, actually what you do is on your website, on um, which is on the bottom right-hand corner, but onlineclarity.com co.uk, you actually have a beautiful and very clearly written guide on how to um, toss coins. So we're going to actually talk a little bit about that in the next segment. So thank you so much.